Hello, good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth for morning prayer on Tuesday the 4th of January. We're using the Church of England's Common Worship provision for the Christmas season, which you'll find in the book towards the beginning after prayer during the day, or if you're following online, the Church of England's website, Arima's Daily Prayer, and uh, one can download apps for Apple or Android devices if you prefer. We're going out on YouTube, audio will be uploaded in uh, half an hour, 40 minutes time, live stream on the Blythe Church's Facebook page. And the details are there and on the website of the Zoom meeting link, which I have opened. And I'm also here in person. Those of you who have a uh, video can see. You might be able to hear a certain amount of echo, which there wouldn't be if I was just in my front room. So welcome to you all. Let us pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. You laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth. To you be praise and glory forever. As your living word, eternal in heaven, has seen the frailty of our mortal flesh. May the light of your love be born in us to fill our hearts with joy as we sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of the bride. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. who has clothed me with the garments of salvation and has covered me with the cloak of integrity. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth puts forth her blossom, and as seeds in the garden spring up, so shall God make righteousness and praise blossom before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silence, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her deliverance shines out like the dawn, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your deliverance, and all rulers shall see your glory. <coughs> then you shall be called <coughs> by a new name, which the mouth of God will give. You shall be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. So we move on to the Psalms. If you're following in the book, you'll find the Psalms at the back. <coughs> but do keep a finger in uh, morning prayer during Christmas season. As we will be returning there once we've read. And in fact, we are reading only from one Psalm this morning, Psalm 89, the first, and, first, the first 37 verses. Psalm 89 from verse 1 to 37. We'll open and close the portion with the refrain provided, truly the Lord, etc. And I'll say the glory be after verse 37 and we'll return to the refrain. And if you want to use the prayer that's offered after this psalm, we'll do that in silence. I'll read straight through. You're welcome to listen or read the whole psalm with me or just the even numbered verses as we make our way through as if we were reading it antiphonally here in person. Psalm 89 from verse 1. Truly the Lord is our shield. My song shall be always of the loving kindness of the Lord. With my mouth will I proclaim your faithfulness throughout all generations. I will declare that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness as firm as the heavens. For you said I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David my servant. Your seed will I establish forever and build up your throne for all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord and your faithfulness in the assembly of the Holy Ones. For who among the clouds can be compared to the Lord, who is like the Lord among the host of heaven, the God feared in the council of the Holy Ones, great and terrible above those all those round about him. 
who is like you, Lord God of hosts, <clears throat> mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. You rule the raging of the sea, you still its waves when they arise. You crushed Rahab with a deadly wound, and scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. Yours are the heavens, the earth also is yours. You established the world and all that fills it. You created the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before your face. Happy are the people who know the shout of triumph. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name they rejoice all the day long and are exalted in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and in your favour you lift up our heads. Truly the Lord is our shield, the Holy One of Israel is our King. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set a youth above the mighty, I have raised a young man over the people. I have found David my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand shall hold him fast, and my arm shall strengthen him. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked person afflict him. I will strike down his foes before his face, and beat down those that hate him. My truth also and my steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name shall his head be exalted. I will set his dominion upon the sea, and his right hand upon the rivers. He shall call to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him my firstborn, the most high above the kings of the earth. The love I have pledged to him will I keep for ever, and my covenant will stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. But if his children forsake my law, and cease to walk in my judgments, if they break my statutes, and do not keep my commandments, I will punish their offences with a rod, and their sin with scourges. But I will not take from him my steadfast love, nor suffer my truth to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter what has gone out of my lips. Once for all have I sworn by my holiness, that I will not prove false to David. His seed shall endure for ever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast for ever as the moon, the enduring witness in the heavens. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Truly the Lord is our shield. And so we turn back to morning prayer during Christmas season, back in the, towards the beginning of the book, or scrolling on uh, past our first reading, if you're following electronically, to the canticle, A Song of the Messiah, verses from Isaiah 9. Unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, upon them the light has dawned. You have increased their joy and given them great gladness. They rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest, for you have shattered the yoke that burdened them, the collar that lay heavy on their shoulders. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. Our first Bible reading is uh, from the book of Ruth, in the middle of the Hebrew Scriptures. Do you use an index if you want to find it? Um, probably the best bet as it to some extent sort of stand alone, I guess a part of the history section, but uh, I can't immediately tell you. I've just got it presented electronically to me here, ready to go, as those of us who've got the apps or are following online um, experience too. Ruth chapter 3, so it's the book of Ruth, and we're looking for chapter 3. Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, I need to seek some security for you, so that it may be well with you. Now here is our kinsman Boaz, who, with whose young women you have been working 
See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Now wash and anoint yourself, put on your best clothes, and go down to the threshing floor, but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, observe the place where he lies, then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. She said to her, All that I tell you, all that you tell me, I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did just as her mother in law had instructed her. When Burrs had eaten and drunk, and he was in a contented mood, he went to lie down at the end of a heap of grain. Then she came quietly and uncovered his feet and lay down. At midnight the man was startled and turned over and said, There Lying at his feet was a woman. He said, Who are you? She answered, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your cloak over your servant, for you are next of kin. He said, May you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter, and this last instance of your loyalty is better than the first. You have not gone after young men, whether poor or rich, and now, my daughter, do not be afraid. I will do all that you ask for you, all that you ask. For all the assembly of my people know that you are a worthy woman. But now, though it is true that I am a near kinsman, there is another kinsman more closely related than I. Remain this night and in the morning. If he will act as next of kin for you, good, let him do so. If he is not willing to act as next of kin for you, then as the Lord lives, I will act as next of kin for you. Lie down until the morning. <clears throat> so she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before the one person could recognise another. For he said, it must not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. Then he said, bring the cloak you are wearing and hold it out. So she held it, and he measured out six measures of barley and put it on her back. Then he went into the city. She came to her mother-in-law, who said, how did things go with you, my daughter? Then she told her all the man had done for her, saying, He gave me these six measures of barley, for he said, Do not go back to your mother nor empty handed. She replied, Wait, my daughter, until you learn how the matter turns out, for the man will not rest, but will settle the matter today. One level, it all sounds very dry and contrived, but at another, this is uh, typical of how people met um, in those days, as people gathered at the threshing floor, a bit like going to the water cooler outside our uh, own little. Uh, departments and teams at work. <clears throat> it's one of those places where people meet others and uh, it's traditional on the threshing floor on market day to meet people. And uh, here in the middle of the night, a contract, if you like, is established, um, just as when God came to earth, uh, unannounced, in secret, and uh, let us know God's presence rather than uh, making God's avail get God's self available to all of us, um, even though we might not deem ourselves worthy, not going after, God didn't go after others, but came for us and uh, waited patiently for us to notice, made us aware of God's presence. And then, as with Boaz, some, many of us chose to engage with Jesus in a covenant. But we said, well, we might just want to double check, check some facts, check our faith. How will this affect our lives before we commit? But uh, we'll think on it and get back to you, God. And here, to some extent, if it's an interpretation that I just came up with as I was reading this, seeing as we're reading in the Christmas season. The uncovering of feet could mean that she uncovered his uh, midriff, his uh, genitals, because that was the private parts. It was a metaphor, so a bit like uh, they say, um, we, we say today, um, somebody sleeps with somebody. What they actually mean is that they're having, um, enjoying physical intimacy one with the other or experiencing that. And so this is, could be code for saying they actually, as we might say today, slept together. And uh, this uncovering of feet and covering with cloak uh, could be metaphors, or it could simply be, as said here, liter literally, she just uncovered his feet. However, one way or another, the most important thing is this covenant is established, and it's the covenant of blessing. She goes away with six measures of barley. Interesting, not five, which would be um, the number of books in the law, not seven, which is a complete number, it's an incomplete number. So although there's blessing, there is also promise. And so may that be our experience today as we engage in the covenant that God has established for us. Uh, the background to this story, of course, is um, that uh, Naomi leaves um, the promised land when there's scarcity of food. I forget where she goes to, but uh, her two boys marry and then die. And she returns to her homeland, um, offering to leave the two girls behind that they might marry again, two women. But uh, they... One stays and one goes, and uh, Ruth goes back as a foreigner to Naomi's homeland, which makes that even more extraordinary, I guess, thinking that, that uh, this covenant was entered into. God is a God of the foreigner, the unassuming, which may or may not include us. As in terms of unassuming or foreigner, um, God's promise and offer and covenant include all. Colossians 3 from 12 is our second reading, so if you're following online, scroll past the uh, canticle we read earlier. If you're following in uh, Bibles, Colossians is in that little set of five books um, whose second 
consonant, no, whose second, whose vowel, opening vowel sound, that's what I mean, um, follows the A-E-I-O-U. So you've got Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, the third of that book of five, group of five, um, after, I think, Romans and Hebrews. But do use an index if it doesn't open for you. So it's in the Second Covenant Greek Scripture, Colossians, large number, head of paragraph, chapter 3, beginning at 12, going through to the first verse of the following chapter, Colossians 3 from 12. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subject to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Children, obey your parents and everything, for this is your acceptable duty in the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, for they may lose heart. Slaves, obey your earthly masters and everything, not only while being watched and in order to please them, but wholeheartedly fearing the Lord. Whatever your task, put yourselves into it, as done for the Lord and not for your masters, since you know that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. Serve the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever wrong has been done, and there is no partiality. Masters, treat your slaves justly and fairly, for you know that you also have a master in heaven. <clears throat> interesting advice from um, Paul potted version of uh, what he wrote to the Corinthians and the first part is one that I recommend to people who want to get, want to get married as their Bible reading as this is written to a group of Christians from Jewish and Gentile backgrounds just as people getting married usually they've lived together for a fair few years these days but one way or another they still do bring in traditions their own family traditions <clears throat> and it pays those of us who are supporting such an alliance such a contract such a covenant rather to encourage people to be forgiving to love and to live with humility and meekness just as these two groups from jewish and gentile background would have had their own customs their own ways of doing things would have needed to recognize that they might have made mis uh, caused or had misinterpretation of what other people were doing misunderstood other people's um, intentions and uh Maybe got on, uh, upset each other, got on each other's nerves. <clears throat> and uh, so that's the opening passage. Live well as the Church of God. But then we move on to some direct instructions. People married, uh, people uh, as parents and children, and slaves and masters. And uh, effectively what Paul is wanting to do is to maintain the status quo. Because when people realise they're free in Christ, they could just walk away from their earthly covenants and commitments and uh, Paul is keen for us to remain engaged with the world not to see the world as secular and separate therefore from the sacred but to have us engage wholly and fully with it indeed a uh, marriage preface going back to that talks about marriage being fundamental a fundamental component to society um, clothing uh, love relationship with a godly and legal covenant between um, consenting adults that are attracted each to the other and wish to live and promise each other faithfully to eat the other for life, or as long as they're able to hold it together. Spouses submit to spouses as is fitting in the Lord, and the spouse must love the other and not treat them harshly. Uh, as with parents and children, and uh, slaves and masters, parents and children, Children must obey parents. Parents must not provoke children. And then interestingly, it's given master... Um, slavery is just an accepted part of life in those days and quite different from the sort of... Well, I don't know. There is that sort of slavery still today, I guess, where people are bought and sold and are part of the established society. But also in our own land, we have slavery. I mean, some of the things we buy in terms of food and clothes mean that slavery is... Uh, we support slavery, I guess, in those... Um, choices to keep prices down and the like <clears throat> but uh, that sort of slavery tends to be much much more seedy even than this official sort of roman peace type slavery and uh, amongst the peoples of the time but this isn't to say that slavery is a good thing 
it's simply how things were in those days and things move on but what is true is if we are working whether it's for pay or not then we should work as if we're working for god and not for our bosses nevertheless i would suggest that uh, given the extraordinary balance in wives and husbands spouses children parents etc and masters and slaves that we should not submit to things that are um, unacceptable either in our own circumstances or in the circumstances of others we should stand up for justice and equality. So to the responsory back in morning prayer during Christmas season. The word of life which was from the beginning we proclaim to you, the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The word of life which was from the beginning, that which we heard, which we saw with our eyes and touched with our hands, we proclaim to you. For our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of life which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. And to the song of Zechariah. To us is born the Saviour, who is Christ the Lord, and all the heavenly hosts now sing glory to God in the highest. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. To us is born a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord, and all the heavenly hosts now sing, Glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. Maker, lover, keeper, we thank you for entering into that covenant in the darkness of the light in that intimacy that uh, provides for us even amongst those that we live with an opportunity to change our mind change our heart change our direction the little town of bethlehem has it so well laid out and so we thank you that by your spirit you have moved us to accept that covenant and to live in it peaceably justly with those who rule over us and those whom we serve, those whom we rule over, those who serve us, those we're married to, those we're in familial relations with. Please bless and enable us to fulfil your hope. From World Prayer News, no content coming up. Christian Action Research and Education. Please help social workers engage with the criminal justice system as advocates for victims doing probation and parole work, preparing children to testify in court, working with families and supporting prisoners as they prepare for release. We pray that we will as a society put more money into social care. From Green Christian. If a sustainable transformation is pursued within this decade, Latin American and Caribbean cities can halve their consumption of natural resources while succeeding the fight against poverty, according to UN Environment, United Nations Environment Programme report. It's developed with the International Resource Panel, concluding that by 2050, Cities in the region will consume two to four times more than what is considered that which is considered sustainable if they don't start comprehensive planning and action. It points the way towards more sustainable planning with recommendations on transport and sustainable mobility, efficient and sustainable buildings, waste and water sanitation, and greenhouse gas emissions. We thank God for that report. We pray that it will be heard, listened to, upheld, and that uh, those who live under right-wing regimes will be able to make their voices heard at least and that there will hopefully be change 
that uh, these measures will be adopted and pursued. Our benefit cycle of prayer. We pray on Tuesdays for our local businesses <coughs> and um, local local authority officers and workers and those in our uniformed organisations. We pray that all will be able to play their part, make their contribution to our local community and uh, stay safe in relation to COVID whilst still earning enough to keep themselves in food and heat and clothes and look after their families. We pray they'll be able to manage their work-life balance around children, those that have them, if their children have to stay off and or if partners or spouses are having to isolate. We pray for your grace. Coming back to that Colossians reading. We thank you for our people today, praying with thanksgiving for Jason and John, who look after Halesworth as its church warden. St Mary's here. We pray for them, the other officers on the PCC. We pray that you'll grow the PCC. Thank you for those who have given their time and effort to date. We pray for those on the electoral roll, those in our congregations in the wider community. And we give thanks for all who play their part, who like to use this building and who support it and uh, recognise its value here in the heart of the town. And going back to Corona, we pray that all efforts uh, in this country and around the world will work to the good and uh, keep people safe and well and uh, will reduce the numbers of people who are suffering symptoms and that we'll be enabled to keep abreast of how the different variants develop and spread and their different uh, levels of symptom and uh, contagion or uh, infection rates. We pray that justice will be done or at least there will be some recompense and that uh, the Christian colonialist West and the other superpowers of the East will move to be more gracious and supportive of the wider world and recognise that it is in our general interest to follow the guidance in our reading about slaves and masters and to not treat those who we've excluded harshly and to include them as we rely on their efforts to maintain the social order and the structure of our world. We pray for justice in relation to safety measures pertaining to COVID. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We collect for the Christmas season from the book Almighty God who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us through your son Jesus Christ Grant that as he came to share our humanity, so we may share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And there's another silent prayer as the water is added to the wine at Mass. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, bless us and fill us with peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.